So now what I want to show you is how we can go about uh, adding some of the details that we probably need for this dinosaur. So right now it's probably a good idea for me to show you uh, how to use layers. So in order to use layers, uh, it's here under the sub tool menu, so click once. And you see that uh, you have the layer options here. And if you want to create a new one, here's the button to create a new layer. So let's go ahead and create one. When you create a new layer, it is set to record. So whatever we're doing, uh, it's actually being recorded to this layer. You can also name it if you want to. So once you have created the layer, we can start working on the dinosaur, of course. So let's go ahead and do something here. You change the size. Remember, is I think it's a right mouse click once to get to this menu. And right now, the intensity is a little too high. This area looks a little too sharp, so we probably want to smooth if you hold down shift. So let's say we start sculpting something, uh, say in the eye area, and we use the, the move tool perhaps. Again, press B to get to this menu here, and we choose the move tool. So say we're doing something here and uh, kind of start messing around. But as you can see, we're kind of messing around with the eyeball there. You probably don't want to actually affect the eyeball. Cause that, I don't think that would be a good idea. Let me undo. So this is when the uh, polygroups that we created are going to be really really helpful because now I can introduce you to masking so if we control shift and click on the eyeball here to isolate it now we don't want to mess with the eyeballs right now because uh, we're not we're not going to be doing any sculpting with it so we, we want to mask uh, the eyeball so in order to mask something if you hold on control you see that it says mask and you can start uh, masking things around so that whatever is masked you mask uh, it's not going to be affected by say sculpting say we do something here it's not affecting the mask and if you want to get rid of the mask control and uh, just click outside but we want to make sure that we mask uh, the eyeballs completely here. So I'm going to the masking menu. And here you can choose mask all. And it's going to mask uh, the whole eyeballs. So now let's get it to everything back. Control shift click. Now you see that the eyeballs have been masked so that if we start moving things it's not going to that area is not going to be affected at all. We probably want to do kind of the same with the, with the teeth here. So if we control shift and click on it. We can come here where it says mask all. Now let's get everything back. You see that those things will, will not be affected by whatever we are doing to the rest of the model.
that's how masking can be really helpful and as I said if you say you masked something here and let's actually use the standard brush change the size and if you started doing something say outside it you see that the mask area is not going to be affected by your sculpting here so that's uh, that's masking right there so now I want to show you how to use alphas now alphas are used to they can be used for easily creating a uh, detail you can say that's the easy way to go about it uh, maybe the cheap way if you if you will so in order to access alphas you have the alpha here click once and you see uh, many alphas here within ZBrush uh, that you can use for detail say we can use this one and we can kind of you see that it's, it's, we're getting some detail here really easy let me increase the intensity there maybe to get some uh, texture there to, for the skin maybe but uh, besides just uh, the option here for if you see that the stroke here it's set to dots right now that's our stroke type but if we click on it you, we have other options as well so let me go through these uh, so we have the drag rectangle let's click on that one and we have our alpha enabled right now and you can see with the drag rectangle drag rectangle we can kind of uh, choose where the alpha and how big or small it's going to be within the the model here so it can be this one could be really useful for creating some skin especially if you're using the right alpha now let's try the color spray here see what it does pretty much is almost randomly adding some of the detail there of the alpha and spray is kind of similar to it as well and the drag dot can be helpful as well what you do is you can kind of place the alpha wherever you want it to be so that's uh, alphas can be really useful for creating detail really really quickly and you're not uh, you can import your own alphas you have the option here it says import alpha and it basically just has to be a black and white image uh, a grayscale image and you have more options if you come here to the light box you see that we have a uh, an area here for alphas now you're not going to get all these but you, I think the ones that come with ZBrush are I believe are these right here so if you double click on it you see that it becomes active and we can use that alpha say with drag rectangle you can kind of get some some skin skin bumpy skin there and we, you can try all these uh, maybe you can find something that you really like for really easy detail that doesn't require much work really and all these alphas I got all these from the ZBrush website they have a few alphas available there that you can download uh, if you want to I'll probably make this available uh, in my website as well probably have a folder so you can download all these uh, get these alphas for really easy you can use them for really easy detail now the only problem when using alphas is that sometimes it can be uh, 
somewhat easy for someone to tell that you used an alpha because maybe they've, they've used it before or uh, they kind of recognize it from the ZBrush website or so so it can be somewhat easy sometimes to recognize that you used a particular alpha and by the way to get the alphas actually to be here within the light box you see we're on the light box right now under the alpha menu uh, to get all these exactly in this place so that they're loaded and you don't have to come here to alpha and say import you can actually save all these images within the uh, alpha folder uh, in the ZBrush uh, program files actually, let me show you so if you go here and look for the pixel logic uh, for R2 and here you have uh, it says C alphas and this is where I copied all the files for those alphas to be available where when I start ZBrush so this is the path right here you have to make sure I have all these as PSDs and the Photoshop files I think they have to be and they have to be grayscale images so make sure that for so in Photoshop there's an option if to change the image mode from RGB to grayscale and make sure that they have been grayscale images because I have one right here I think it's not I didn't save it as a grayscale image I believe is a uh, might be this one see this one when I double click on it because I didn't save it as a grayscale image ZBrush opens it as a texture instead of an alpha but actually you can also make it work from here you have the texture loaded and here you have the option to make that alpha so if you click on that now that texture is an alpha you can disable that and you can actually use it as an alpha but of course to save time as I said save it as a as a grayscale image within ZBrush so you can get some detail and of course make your own alphas for uh, really quickly developing the the major details in the model So I think that's about it in terms of how to use alphas and uh, getting those to work and also using drag select. I think that one is the one that works best when using alphas because you can kind of rotate it, change the scale and size of it. So that's probably the one that you might use the most when using alphas. So that's uh, that's how you can go about creating the detail for it and of course uh, in the next video I'm going to show you if you actually want to do it the way of actually sculpting the detail instead of using an alpha of course you can always do a combination of the two so if you remember we were using a layer we have been recording all that I've done within this layer so if we click record once again now it's not enabled so so uh, we can actually change the intensity of the layer by dragging the slider you see that kind of changes the intensity of it the transparency I suppose it is and we can also disable it so that we don't see that at all so that's how layers can be really useful one thing that I do recommend when using layers is save your scene really often in many different uh, stages because when you use layers ZBrush tends to crash many occasions so that's uh, just in case you you want to know that and you don't want that to happen so I got that and of course you can always delete that layer X right here you can delete it of course you can duplicate it and rename it and all those things as well if you want to continue to work on this particular layer you have to enable it 
and to do that you have to click here to record one more time and you see that it changes to recording and now you can continue to work on that layer for now I'm actually going to delete it and uh, also if you wanted it to that layer to become part of the model to be actually baked into the model you can choose uh, I believe it's here bake all layers and that's usually something that you probably want to do at the end you have to make sure that you're really happy with the results so I'm going to just I'm going to delete it so I'm not I was just using it to show you the alphas so in the next video I'm going to show you how to actually start uh, sculpting without using alphas and just using some of the brushes available in ZBrush okay